Hey everybody, it's Luke here once again with another episode of Luke's Power Art. Today we come to the end of our Stephen Platt series as we look at the guns and gear of Stephen Platt. This is sort of the episode where we we look at all the stuff that used to wow us. Besides the muscles and the veins, this is where we used to see the 50 pouches. We used to see the bullet shells through the air. We used to see um, the massive guns that no human being could possibly hold. That's what this episode is going to teach us how to draw. Um, and that will be the conclusion of this series. Now, next week, I'm going to uh, go a little bit left of field, and we're going to be looking at how to draw like the fist of the North Star. Now, why would I do that? We've been looking at some 90s artists. I'd advertised we're going to be looking at a lot of 90s artists this year, and we still are. But it just becomes so apparent to me how influential manga has been on Rob Liefeld, Stephen Platt, Tom McFarlane, Jim Lee. The list goes on of these guys who we are looking at at the moment on this channel. And so I thought, why not go to the source? Why not go to one of the sources uh, from the 80s, which was Fist of the North Star, uh, drawn by Tetsuhara, and uh, a Japanese artist, a very famous Japanese artist, an amazingly accomplished artist. So next week, we're going to start looking at him over a number of weeks, uh, and to show you the building blocks that influenced our beloved 90s American comic books. But for now, let's get into Guns and Gear with Stephen Platt. All right, so here's a good one of a gun the Prophet is holding. If you don't have any understanding of what real guns look like, your basic sort of firearm that, you know, the military would use generally has a few components. If I was to draw one now, I could draw a very basic, and if you're an expert in this area, don't have a go at me because I'm just drawing this basically. A very basic sort of AR-15 looking top gun. All right, that would have its full stock. Go out like that. This here, this little rectangle is where the shell flies out of. Once the weapon is fired. Um, and it would sort of have a whole lot of stuff in here. Your trigger is obviously down there. This is the magazine, this comes out, this carries the bullets. If it was, you'd be able to see them in there if it was see-through, like that. Handle on top, you can put another handle here, have a look cool like that. Or you can put other things here, like a light or a laser for laser guided sort of stuff. Having a little bit of working knowledge of how things work in the real world, like how the basics of a rifle works or a handgun or whatever, can help you to actually then go over the top and expand it into things like what Steven does. So you can see at the top here, Steven has put a sight on this gun a lot like the kind of sight you'd see on an AR-15 or M16. Um, he has a big magazine down here, which is similar to an AK-47. He has a grenade launcher in the middle here, which is similar to what you see on um, the sort of M16. It's got a different name, but it's basically an M16 with a grenade launcher at the bottom. You'll see Schwarzenegger using that in Predator. Um, and that would look... Also, you see something like that in Aliens. So that really, if you're drawing that, in all its basic form is just a tube. This is from the side, but if you had it like that, and then it has a bigger tube around it. 
and some point back here, usually in the real world, I'll have a trigger and that would sit below there and that would be somewhat like that there and then your magazine would be coming down similar to that might be a bit more of a gap in there but you get the gist of that would be what that weapon would look like in real life to extent so when we come to drawing it with profit or Steven, generally the, the weapons we're drawing with Steven are Prophet or a character from Prophet. What we are looking at is exaggeration of reality. And he really just puts shapes on shapes. So you may have something here like this, which looks like the beginnings of a handgun. Okay. It may just be like that. Then all of a sudden you get this big square here and then you got something else there, right? And then he may just do that sight like we talked about. And then you'll have a big shape there, a massive magazine coming down like that. And he may even do some cool structural looking stuff where he'll put like things like that in, just looks like, you know, beam structure you'll see in an old school building. There's a trigger there. Then you'll put lots of cylinders up top, like um, a sight or a laser sight of some kind, things like that. And you see on this one, he's got some cool sort of dots set up. Gives it a bit of visual interest. They randomly just put things popping out of things like this because they look cool. Then you'll put a second magazine in the handle. And he might even do that, like we said, some little grenade launcher thing down the bottom. This is the easiest place to figure out rendering because pipes, they just have a simple line there. Then you have the under lighting. And with Steven, he may just do a few lines like that. Other guys will do the full stipple effect like that. But if you need to practice that rendering, it might be good to practice it on weapons or belts and things like that because the shapes are a bit more straightforward than the arm, for example, or the pecs or the abs. And once you get that down, you can just apply the same principle to the human body. So if you're looking at it, he kind of does things like this. And if you expand it, you can apply this to any shape. So you could be drawing some mega huge gun See, it's all just a mixture of shapes if you take all the rendering away and then just add the rendering. And what is the purpose of a pouch? No one knows. I mean, these guys are carrying so many pouches. Rob Liefeld is the guy that started the pouch um, as far as I'm concerned. If you're a big fan of 90s image, 90s Marvel sort of stuff, you're a fan of the pouch as we can see right here. So let's have a look. How does Stephen Platt draw a pouch? Well, there's a basic shape to it. You are basically drawing a rectangle like this. 
okay then you're drawing like that like almost like a triangle but cut the top off so if you do the full triangle it'll come down like that but you don't want to do that you just want to have it like this and then you draw some kind of a buckle it's a key thing to think guys think about how things are in the real world i mean this sort of drawing is exaggerated okay and, it's, and i love exaggerated drawing it's cool it's fun it's good to look at but think about in the real world if you're drawing a pouch the pouch needs to be able to close it needs to be able to um, have some kind of a buckle or some kind of a, a button of some kind to close and so this is what Stephen does he adds this in right here you can see that right there same over here his belt has a buckle to some extent although this is exaggerated drawing there's some practicality to it. Okay, so this is the shape. That's the general shape you're looking for, right? But the way he draws it, obviously he draws it in a 3D fashion. So you would draw it like this, as you can see here. Turn it to its side, curve bottom. Bring this down like that. And then you bring it down like that. Okay have that sort of like that maybe a bit more 3d and it follows like that that's the basic structure you're looking at for one of these pouches now how does he render it well he tends to do this very strong dark line on the edge at least in his early pouch work when he was still coming off moon Knight, where this is a rendering style he was using a lot in moon Knight. You do that, you might have a few lines coming down like that to show the shadow of the top of the pouch. Obviously there's a bit of blood and other things there, so we can sort of do a bit of that. Uh, a few dents, a few other things there, some very, very thin lines here. And some other lines up here to show form and curve that around a little bit more at this point we can probably just darken that edge a little bit like that bring that down there and then you just get your eraser tool and you start to attack that was a bit big wasn't it you start to attack this dark area just to demonstrate that it's, uh, it kind of demonstrates that it's part of the whole. It doesn't just look like a dark area you've slapped on something, which doesn't look right. Um, remembering that Steven uses markers, so he uses very fine lined markers. He doesn't use a crow quill or anything like that, like a um, Scott Williams would or any of those sort of guys. So there's these lines that sometimes, if you can see them here, they look faint. And that probably is the fact they used a very fine lined pen and then when it was scanned in, it really didn't pick it up as much. And it has a cool effect, but it's not that easy to replicate unless you do a similar technique. But just be aware of that. There are these lines around like that. And you would obviously bring that curve all the way over. Have this edge here like that. And you've kind of got this line here and it's not really there, but you can see the way they've lit that down here. That's what it's suggesting. So if we get rid of that there, that is the basic shape how you would do this. Now just to help you out a little bit, that's the basic shape and the basic rendering that he's doing there. But this rendering is no different to what we've been doing up until this point. Um, while we're here, this buckle is a good example of tech, and how Stephen does tech. This buckle, fundamentally this shape, 
Now you can see it's a very basic shape, but what does he do? He draws a line down here. And he does these little vent things like this. This is very manga and anime, okay? So very manga. Stephen is very influenced by that. Rob Liefeld was very influenced by manga. And I say manga because I think that's the way you pronounce it. A lot of people say manga, like in the Western world. I think it's manga if you were in Japan. That's how you probably say it properly, but if you speak Japanese, feel free to correct me. So you do some little things here, like this, little circles like you might have, like that could be where a screw goes and something that's metal. You might do this, you might do that. And then obviously he's got some blood and other things sticking on there. He's got something like that. It looks like a circuit board almost running along there. And this is one of the tricks. Okay, uh, I've heard Jim Lee talk about this. Um, it's basically just putting shapes all over the place with some sense of purpose that gets that cool background look, you know, if they're like in a technical area, like a, uh, you know, some kind of um, warehouse, or if you think of the film Aliens, um, the James Cameron film, the second one, when they're running through all those big industrial areas, all the backgrounds have similar little design features like this. I think actually James Cameron was an influence on Steven as well. If I, I think I read that in one of his um, interviews. But if you're looking at things, you can take any shape, right? And this is this is what I want you to to sort of uh, understand. When you do all of this, you're not just learning how to draw like Stephen Platt. You're learning how to take these elements and apply them to your own drawing style. Anywhere. So you might just draw a shape like this. And you go on to make this look really techy. So I'll put a couple of little rectangles in. It looks like a vent. I'll draw a line that goes like this. I'll draw a line that goes like that and overlaps another line. Now while I've got this page up, we must deal with how to draw bullet shells. Stephen Platt is a master of bullet shells. Bullet shells are not that difficult to draw, but there is a technique to them. Okay, so if I'm gonna draw that and then draw that. The bullet shells are quite thick. A standard bullet shell, if you're looking at a bullet shell, may look like that in the real world, okay? Stephen Platt's bullet shells are massive because the guns his characters fire are massive. So let's look at this. Usually there's another, a secondary line back here. And then he'll just do, depending on where the light is, he'll do the dark point all the way through. Don't leave a, a gap. And then he'll do a few rendering lines like that. And the point here is, if the light source is coming from here, and the darkest point, remembering this is a cylinder, is going to be here. See that? So the light can get to here at the bottom, right, in here, but it can't get to here. Okay, so that means when you're figuring out how do I render inside the shell to make it look legit, you need to do wherever the light source is, which is here, because this dark line is at the bottom. So if you've got the cylinder again like that, the light's coming here, so it's most reflective up there where it can't get to because this is a cylinder, right? So a circle like that from the front, the light comes from here, it's gonna to struggle to get to there. And this point here is up there. Okay, you follow me there? So this is why this is the darkest point on the bullet shell. Same principle, being a cylinder, it's gonna create a shadow, right? Because it's actually an object that holds something, 
before it was fired, gunpowder. And the actual bullet that would sit in here. So, you draw this here, and then you just do a few little lines like that, just to show darkness to light. You'll be tempted to do this. Some guys do, but it loses the effect. Um, as far as I'm concerned, and it's not what Steven does, if you're interested in that. So you've got the dark point here, a few lines just out to show that we're coming out of darkness into light. That works like this. If you guys haven't watched my rendering video of Steven Platt or rendering of Rob Liefeld, please feel free to jump back and watch those. I go into this sort of rendering dark to light stuff a lot more and in a lot more detail. There's your full darkness, thin lines gradually getting thicker and away as you go from dark to light. There are some grenades that he's carrying, which follow exactly the same principle as a bullet shell. So you might have this, just a cylinder. Then he obviously does some cooler stuff with it. Maybe it comes off to the side a bit like that. Maybe it's got some kind of a component to it. Maybe it even has the pin. And then you just draw this dark point. and it creates that same effect. And that is just what the grenade would look like. You can see how much gear on these guys. You can see some sort of grenade thing there. That's what we talked about. You can see these pipe things up here. You can see these masks. A lot of this is from a manga influence. And a lot of it is just shape add-ons. So add on this shape, this shape, kind of like we looked at with the guns. But if you were to try and replicate it, he does a lot of this sort of stuff. And you may have seen this in, in certain manga or anime where you'll find these sort of shapes. Right? That sort of thing. Usually it's... Um, there's a head like that. You see these these things coming off. They're kind of like triangles like that, but they're a bit more rounded. I have them coming off all over the place like that. He loves doing that. All right, if there's the eyes of the character. There's the neck. You'll also th see this if you had like one of those um, mech warrior type guys. So really quickly, you'll see these things coming off their backs. Like that. There's the arm bit there. You see these massive sort of almost like wings coming off the back and they have this sort of thing going on that he does a lot of that sort of stuff so let's say a guy has a helmet on and then he has a bit of the shadow star mask coming down which I'll talk about in a minute and then he just has other components here that come down to like an under the chin type thing now, he's probably going to have at least one eye blocked out by some technical readout system. And then you might have other components up here. Like that. 
And you see this is very quick, it's very basic. I'm just giving you shapes here. I'm not giving you great rendering or anything. There's the guy's neck. And he's probably got huge armor on. Maybe even some kind of a neck protector like you see in Apocalypse. Apocalypse has that neck protector thing like this that comes down. Rob Liefeld used to draw these a lot on cable. Of course, down here, it's probably going to have a grenade or two all attached up together. Or three. It's going to have pouches galore. You can see guys, once you get a sense of just adding shapes together, you can get a really good result. And that's that's really, you know, we'll call that layout level result. That's not a final result. This is just sort of like your layout. You come back and draw over the top of that. So if I was to do this just as a demonstration, I'd, I'd fade that back, put a proper layer on top. I'd come back and I'd be doing some better line work like that. Often his characters wear big shoulder pads. And so you can see if you had a head here, you may have this massive shoulder pad of this nature. Okay, there's a torso. The arms are coming out to the side there. And it may cover part of the arms as well. But these are a similar principle. It's just a shape. And then you draw the lighting and under lighting. And then you break it up. Like that. And you might get an eraser. Just to accentuate that edge line. Just cut through. So I cut through there. You can see he's done that sort of stuff there. You can add anything you like. You can add, that could be a screw. There could be some componentry there that looks more technical. You can add shapes in shapes. It's actually a pretty straightforward technique. It's not that complicated once you get your head around the rendering and things like that. So that's one component you'd look at. This is where he took things to the next level when it came to sort of cybernetic looking stuff because this is Profit Volume 1, Issue 1, where he took on more of a manga look. You can see the hair, more manga-esque, but more equipment as opposed to just the, the sort of like the, the raw, bare-chested, Rambo-style Profit. So you can see these things here, this sharp elbow guard, shoulder guard, headgear. You can see the sort of the way I did that shoulder pad there. So in looking to draw this sort of stuff, you just draw a big circle and these here types of triangles. So you draw one line there, another line there, another line there, and then remembering it's 3D, almost like a very tall pyramid. And so you do it again, like that. Okay, remembering there's some beat up here, like he's been chopped at with a couple of axes or swords. So remember that. These edge bits that have been 
cut out or chipped away. Gives a good character. Where's the light gonna come from? We'll put it from here, which means that this face is gonna be darker. Uh, this face I think will be darker. This face and this face. Get the furthest away from the light and then you can simply put a massive dark section in. Bit better, bit different. And then he does these little lines in here. Little render lines there just to show it. that's a, a bit of an edge before the light hits it. And as a quick job, that's not too bad. A few little points there just to show form. Something I have to teach before we finish this episode is tearing of gear. Because Stephen Platt has an amazing way of tearing gear. See up here? You've actually got these tears. Tears here. Tears here. He has a very specific way of doing his tears. So if we were to draw some cloth like that, okay. The way he does it is he adds circles, okay? So you might have some circles here, some circles there, and then he has circles on top of circles that cut out the edges. So if you just draw a circle like that, and there's a circle, 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 all right? Do a whole lot of circles like that. And then like we did before, fade it back, come back with a layer on top, and just draw like that. Don't draw the full circles, just draw where they connect. Keep some of these circles in here. And realize that every time, see how there's a flat edge here, right, right there? We don't have flat edges. Everything comes to a sharp point. So it goes out like that, and then you do that. Something like that, okay? So it's almost like if you draw a triangle and then flip that triangle up and then flip it down again, he does little things like that. The very last component I wanna show you is this Shatterstar type mask. Really simple. If I was to draw it like this, it's like a C. I'll draw one half of it here. And imagine that it's got all these lines like this. And this would be good for your layout to draw that. And then we bring that down, get a new layer. Then you can have some better line work. there and then when you're putting in your sort of dark point which you will do like this and then you have the other one down the bottom Like that. What 
these guides do, they help you to bring these lines up. Because the shadow is following these lines. Okay. Bring some other ones up like that. And you can also bring some to show this is curved. Got these lines under here, these lines under here. And this is a very rough. You have to be kind of rough on this. If you try and draw it too clinically, it doesn't look right. Okay. So you remember. And you have to make sure you get rid of this solid looking dark point because it doesn't look good. You can put little lines in between, little bits of blood or dust and scratches. And you've got the eye here. Okay. Few hit pieces of hair coming down. There you can see that. And that is basically how you draw that shatter star sort of mask. Well guys, that's it. I've given you quite a few components there, quite a few uh, insights into how to draw like Stephen Platt. Um, that's it for the Stephen Platt series for now. There might be some more in the future. If you guys want some more, let me know. Have a great week, guys. Catch you then. <laughs>